We begin in New Zealand with the news just announced by the Prime Minister that Claire Curran is being removed from Cabinet and has resigned from her government digital, digital services portfolio and open government responsibilities following another failure to properly declare a meeting. Now this was announced by the PM at a media conference in her Mount Albert electorate office about an hour ago and following it just after half past four I spoke to Jacinda Ardern by phone. Yeah, I've announced today, um, John, that I will be removing her from Cabinet. She's also relinquishing her uh, role as Minister for um, Government Digital Services and Open Government. Uh, and the reason I've done that, I was advised late on Monday um, that the Minister had discovered that she had another situation back in February where she had met with an individual um, that was not pr appropriately recorded in her diary and as a consequence um, did not answer a written question in Parliament accurately. Uh, now, the person that she met with uh, was a gentleman by the name of Derek Handley. Um, he subsequently has applied for a role as the Chief Technology Officer. That's still a process that's been finalised. Look, even though there was no um, malice in that meeting, uh, certainly it does not create uh, a perception that I'm happy with, nor does it demonstrate the standard of transparency I expect from my ministers. It is the second time this has happened with the minister, and that's why I have removed her from Cabinet. Now, now she is still broadcasting Minister, and I want to come back to that, she was a uh, Government Digital Services Minister. Should yes. she have been meeting with Derek Handley at all in the context of the fact he was applying for this job? Yeah, well, look, they, at that point, um, the job hadn't been um, advertised. Uh, that didn't happen until May, and this meeting occurred in February. Uh, and I think, you know, if you reflect on any time, you know, someone's applied for a job, it's not unusual to ask questions to find out more about a role. Uh, what we need to do, though, is uh, make sure that we're entirely transparent if that happens. That's the issue here. The minister failed to record it. She admits uh, entirely that this was an oversight, a mistake on her part. Uh, but there needs to be consequences. Uh, this is significant. The Minister has lost two portfolios she cares deeply about. She's been demoted from Cabinet, but I need to make sure I'm proportionate as well. Absolutely. I want to come back to the consequences. I just want to get to this meeting. So Derek Handley mm -hmm. was... What Was it known then that this job was becoming available? I mean, wasn't yeah, he was meeting with, with, the, with, with the Minister for whom he was hoping to work? And, um, and the minister, of course, also was familiar with some of the other candidates as well. Just to give you some background. Did she meet Technology with them? Did she meet with the other candidates? She'd, she'd known them. Uh, uh, she'd met some of them before. Um, whether or not it was specifically over this, I could not tell you. Um, I have the, uh, given the appointment process for the chief technology officer um, to the Minister of State Services to double check the DIA's process and ensure it is robust. I absolutely accept the perception that has been created here, which is why we're now going through a process to ensure it has been rigorous. Uh, I do not want to jeopardise the role of Chief Technology Officer. It's a significant one. Absolutely. Is Derek Handley uh, going to get the job? Has he been appointed but not announced? He has been a candidate. I'm now going through a process of checking uh, that the appointment process was robust. Certainly from what I've seen, it's been very rigorous. It was first advertised in December. It was not successfully filled. Uh, the search was widened. Um, we announced it would be widened in February. That then kicked off, uh, uh, the second round kicked off some months later. It has been very rigorous, um, but I'm doing, uh, making sure officials do a final check on that before we announce who is being successful sometime likely next week, John. Okay, so, so, so an appointment has been made, just not announced, or I'm unclear about that? I, I'd prefer if I could leave the final stages of this process to be dealt with by state services, but we'll make sure that we uh, announce the timing of events, the sequence of events at that time. What we have released today, we have released the communication that the Minister had with Mr Hanley, so you'll, it, it'll be uh, available for the public to see exactly what exchanges happen there so that we can ensure we have been transparent. A absolutely, and the transparency is really important, a and justice must not only be done, it must be seen to be done. Are we moving... I mean, Indeed. what... what the, the criticism of national governments is often that, that, that it's an old boys network. This is starting to feel a little bit like a, a new boys and girls not a, network. No, not at it, all. You sure? Really, I really reflect that. Yes, of course. The, the space of uh, uh, digital technology, of course, is one where people are familiar with each other. The minister actually hadn't met Mr Henley until that point. Um, and he wanted to ask some questions about the role. And I think we need to keep in mind that that's not necessarily unusual. 
What was wrong here is the perception that it has subsequently created. We should be transparent around these things. There should have been a record of it. Her office and officials should have known, uh, and that is uh, and that is why the minister is paying a hefty price for not having done that. OK, I want to move on to a couple of things, the Australian Prime Minister, but one final question about Claire Karen. So she's outside of Cabinet, she's gone from Cabinet, and yes. she's lost those portfolio responsibilities, but she remains Minister of Broadcasting and now outside Cabinet. Isn't that a lose-lose for the portfolio? No, no. Uh, I don't think anyone would argue uh, that we're not uh, investing heavily in the portfolio of broadcasting. We've got quite a significant agenda there, and I expect that to continue. OK, so the punishment, and you talked uh, in the media conference, and I think you've used the word with me about proportionality, is that she has lost yep. the portfolios and she Good has portfolio. gone from and she's gone from cabinet. And she's gone from cabinet. OK. Yes. Have you spoken to the new Australian Prime Minister? I have. I have. I spoke with him this afternoon. Uh, and, uh, of course, he has a pretty significant uh, background knowledge and understanding of New Zealand, having been involved with New Zealand tourism in the past, and he expressed his... Um, his fondness for New Zealand when we spoke and uh, I reiterated that I looked forward to meeting with him in the future. He, he, was he, a, I know you're not going to, this is a stupid waste of our, our time that I'm even asking you this question, but was there relief that it wasn't Peter Dutton? Is he an easier man for New Zealand to deal with in the context of what's taken place with the deportees and, oh. the, and immigration? Well, I, instead actually I would say it's, it's, it's certainly uh, beneficial to us that there's someone in the role who knows New Zealand so well, having been in the role that he has around tourism and been connected to some of the branding New Zealand has developed over the years. And so, look, there's no doubt that is that is helpful to us. But regardless of who was in that job, um, I'm going to keep advocating for New Zealanders in Australia. And equally, I'm going to keep advocating around deportation issues and issues around uh, our offer, um, our offer to assist uh, with um, Manus and Nauru and the refugees there. That all of that stays the same, regardless of who's in office. Uh, another thing, gosh, it's been a busy old day. Uh, Simon Bridges, the National Party, mm. the Speaker, the leak, uh, the inquiry. Uh, yeah. ceasing the, 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 the sense of the vulnerability of the person responsible for the leak. Is this being handled adequately, do you think? Yeah, I mean, we, from the very beginning, certainly um, uh, my, my view of the situation for what it was worth was that it, it did certainly seem to be an internal matter and one best then managed for by the leader of the opposition. I think that this only reinforces that. Can I, sorry, can I just interrupt there? Because I, I actually haven't heard anyone explicitly uh, well, really explicitly say this. So there is absolutely no doubt whatsoever, full stop, and no light and shade, no smoke and mirrors, that the leak was from within the National Party, oh, from within look, National's I caucus. Have, I don't have the same information as the leader of the opposition, so I certainly can't hand on heart say that. What I can hand on heart say is that um, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't from our side. It wasn't from was the Speaker's office or on. anyone connected to it? It, well, it was, certainly wasn't from the government side, um, John, because we simply don't have access to that information. Uh, and so, look, certainly from the information we have um, now, and of course I only know what I've read in the media, it strikes me this would best be dealt with internally and sensitively. Uh, and, and that's, again, just my perspective. It's not something I have control over. It's ultimately is a matter for the Leader of the Opposition. Prime Minister, can we end on a on a really terrible note? And that is 668 mm. New Zealanders died by suicide in the in yes. the 2718 year, and it is mm. and the and the figure just keeps going up. It's the uh, highest. Uh, yeah, it's the highest uh, uh, since records mm. began, and it is r almost twice the road toll. And this mm. is a national tragedy. It is a national catastrophe. And what what has to be done? And, and this is the question that you know successive successive governments have asked, you know, we have to take responsibility for our role. You know, our job is to make sure um, that there are services, that no matter where someone is or what their needs are, that there is somewhere for them to go. Um, but equally, you know, when I was, and, and that's a huge job and there is certainly more work there to do. But when I was reading a breakdown of the statistics, we know the, the numbers are really high, particularly for our young men, our 20 to 24 year olds and our 40 plus. Uh, and so, that says to me, as well as the fact that we know that at least from Auckland, you know, 60% from memory, will not have had any engagement with mental health services before. They would not have approached anyone or sought that formal help. And what that says to me is that we still have a problem as a nation with removing the stigma and for uh, treating mental health issues the same way that we would cancer or heart disease. 
uh, where we don't <laughs> create an environment where people feel like they have to self-manage or that they have control over this themselves. That's the challenge for all of us. We'll do our bit. I just hope people uh, do theirs in their community and make sure that they create environments where people can open up and, and seek help. Jacinda Ardern, I spoke to her just after half past four, obviously a lot to cover, uh, the suicide figures, and they are the worst in uh, recorded history for this country. Uh, we will look at those again later in the programme.